the battle for the White House taking turns toward President Trump. There have been positive legal developments, recounts called for, and the discovery of thousands of previously uncounted votes that move in the president's favor that support President Trump's legal challenges. The Trump campaign today alleged a pattern of problems in nearly all of the key battleground states. There were three tranches of ballots uncounted that were found in Georgia, amounting to nearly 6,000 votes. Um, you have 234 pages of sworn affidavits uh, in Michigan in one county alone, alleging egregious misconduct by poll workers pushing back observers um, and even allegations of fraud. But there are real questions that need to be asked because we need integrity in our election system. All of our guests on this evening's broadcast will be taking up President Trump's fight for a free and fair election. President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, among our guests, he joins us with the latest from Pennsylvania and the president's challenges against voter fraud in key battleground states, as does attorney Jesse Benal, who just filed a lawsuit on behalf of the Trump campaign to overturn Nevada's election results. Two of our guests tonight have filed sworn affidavits charging election fraud in swing state elections. Garland Favorito says invalid ballots were counted all across Georgia. And Patrick Kulbeck alleges Michigan Democrats were able to access a digital backdoor in the Dominion voting software that is the focus of so many allegations and charges across uh, uh, the country. All of that, much more coming up this hour. We begin with a win for the Trump campaign in Pennsylvania. The president's attorneys preparing to have one of their 11 legal challenges in Pennsylvania heard by the state Supreme Court. The court today announced they will take up the campaign's challenge to more than 8,000 absentee and mail-in ballots from Philadelphia. All of those ballots have a signature on their outer envelope, but are not accompanied by a handwritten name an address or date, all of which are required by law. President Trump also making gains on Joe Biden in Georgia. The state's hand count is scheduled to wrap up at midnight tonight. It's produced at least three batches of previously uh, missing ballots, which have added to the president's vote tally. But the president and other Republicans of the state are now turning their wrath on Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger for the way in which he's conducted the recount. Fox News correspondent Matt Finn is in Atlanta and has more for us. Matt? Louis Georgia's Secretary of State's office insists that all 159 counties here in the state are on track to submit their newly recounted numbers by the 11:59 p.m. deadline tonight as a part of the statewide audit. Nearly every ballot here has been looked over again by an audit team, according to the Secretary of State's office. And once the state certifies its vote, which it's set to do on Friday, the Trump campaign can then ask for a recount here in this state. Now, Joe Biden's lead here in Georgia dropped from about 15,000 votes to 12,000 votes after thousands of uncounted ballots were discovered during the ongoing audit. Four counties had failed to count more than 5,000 votes. Biden's lead shrank, but not enough to change the outcome of the race. Georgia Secretary of State's office says the discrepancies were human error. In Floyd County, the Secretary of State asked for the resignation of the elections director. The uncounted ballots fueled more allegations of misconduct, even from the president tweeting earlier today, quote, the Georgia recount is a joke and is being done under protest. Even though thousands of fraudulent votes have been found, the real number is in matching signatures. Governor must open up the unconstitutional consent decree and call in the legislature. Georgia Secretary of State says the state has a multi-step signature validation system and the Georgia audit actually helped the president's number here in this state. Here's the Secretary of State's office responding to the president's tweet. We're going to continue to follow the law and continue to follow our processes. And the irony of his saying fraudulent votes have been found, he has gained in the finding of those votes. So the system is working the way it's intended. Earlier today, there was a tweet online that got a lot of attention saying that there were 9,000 votes in DeKalb County that were erroneously given to Joe Biden. A short while ago, the CEO of that county said that that tweet is unsubstantiated. Lou. So much is at this point. Matt, thank you very much. Matt Finn reporting. 
Well, the Trump campaign today filing for a partial recount in another battleground state, Michigan. The recount will be conducted in two main counties. Here to explain all of this is Fox News correspondent Mike Tobin. Mike. And talking about Wisconsin, the two counties where the recount will take place are both uh, dense with population, both Democratic strongholds. Dane County is a home to the University of Wisconsin at Madison and home to the Capitol. The urban areas of Milwaukee County were expected to favor Joe Biden, and they did. Now, the Trump campaign is accusing these clerks there, uh, claiming that absentee ballots in those counties were illegally altered when poll workers filled in missing information themselves. The campaign also claims that ballots were issued without voting requesting an application, which they claim is a violation of voting safeguards. And the campaign claims that clerks advise voters to say they were indefinitely confined to their homes due to coronavirus, and that get them around voter ID requirements. The Milwaukee County clerk responded, uh, accusing the Trump campaign of two separate things. One, throwing enough paint at the wall to see what sticks, and two, choosing these population centers to bully the minority vote. Uh, there was uh, Nate Evans, Wisconsin communication director for the Biden-Harris campaign, released a statement reading, in part, the official canvas results reaffirmed Joe Biden's clear and resounding win in Wisconsin. A cherry-picked and selective recounting of Milwaukee and Dane counties will not change these results. The split between Biden and Trump in Wisconsin is just over 20,000 votes, less than 1 percent. The Trump campaign wired $3 million for an estimated $2.8 million tab for the recount. There are 947,000 registered voters in these counties, so the recount ends up just shy of $3 per voters. Canvassing swayed the vote, uh, a little less than 200 votes in favor of the Biden campaign. The recount is scheduled to get underway Friday morning. It needs to be completed by December the 1st. Lou? Mike, thank you very much. Mike Tobin reporting from not Michigan, as I suggested, but Wisconsin. In Michigan, two Republican canvas board members initially refused to certify results in Wayne County, but they were intimidated. They were harassed. They were threatened and called racist by radical Dems. While a live video stream of all of the process of the Canvas Board meeting uh, was uh, carrying much of the event, suddenly it broke down. And while that uh, video uh, was no longer uh, operating, the Republican canvassers flipped, voted with the Democrats, and unanimously certified the Wayne County vote without further explanation. But we will take that up. We have an eyewitness to the proceedings, and we will tell you what happened. Still ahead here tonight. President Trump makes a move to clear out the resistance within his administration. We take that up and more with Rudy Giuliani, among others. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Our first guest tonight has been fighting for a free and fair election in Pennsylvania and indeed around the country. He was in a courtroom in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, uh, about an hour north of Harrisburg yesterday. And joining us this evening is Rudy Giuliani, the president's <laughs> attorney, former mayor of New York City, federal prosecutor, and now leading the fight uh, for a free and uh, fair election. Rudy, great to have you with us. Let's, let's start with... Where are you, you now? Where, where is the campaign <laughs> in Pennsylvania? Well, I'm in, uh, I'm in Washington now, the campaign in Pennsylvania. The judge is considering all the papers that he's been given, so he'll take a few days to decide on what the next step is. Uh, today, today we, had, um, we had some significant victories. We had a significant victory yesterday in, in Nevada where a five- Count, a five-member county board of elections in Clark County, which covers Las Vegas, uh, decertified right. as the winner a Democrat replaced with a Republican based on irregularities. So those are the same irregularities that we have, except only maybe one-fifth of them because he only was running in about one-fifth of the district. And uh, the irregularities there have to do with the signatures being, uh, being improperly identified, uh, many, many. Right signatures that were improperly identified to the point that it would easily 
if the same criteria is applied to the Trump campaign as the five Democrats applied to that campaign, it would uh, pretty easily overturn, overturn the election. Well, in Pennsylvania, you also Michigan. had another positive uh, development as well, in which, uh, what was it, uh, about uh, 8,000 illegal uh, ballots, you want to t toss them out. Uh, the, the Supreme Court is going to hear that uh, case. That's very positive. Uh, the issue of also uh, observers. Uh, in Pennsylvania, the suggestion that observers don't have to watch, they just simply be, have to be present. That seemed to be the conclusion of the court. It, uh, what was, is that, was that your <laughs> takeaway? Lou, of all the uh, political decisions and the kind of awful things judges have to do when they act like political hacks, this may be the worst. The, the law of Pennsylvania says that when you're counting these ballots, you must have both Republicans and Democrats present. So when we were thrown out en masse, we went to court. And the first judge, a Democrat appointed in Philadelphia, said, well, you're present. You don't have to see. Well, because that's ridiculous. What's the point of being there? We're not there for fun. We're not there to, you know, play video games. Mm -hmm. So then it went up on appeal. And to her credit or their credit, that panel, which was also Democratic, said, well, present has to have meaning. They have to be able to see, observe, like in all the other 49 states. And finally, we went to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court, five to two, voted that all they have to do is let you in the room. And you could be a thousand feet away, it doesn't matter, as long as you're in the same room. Making the, making Which was the, quite the a statute different decision. and the law absurd, ridiculous, right. irrational, stupid, dumb. And, and Pennsylvania is now the only state in the country, and in fact, even uh, contrary to the law of Tanzania, it doesn't allow inspection of mail-in ballots. So this is a so, ridiculous decision. I want you to guess, Lou, if it was five to two, how many were Democrats and how many were Republicans? Just guess. Unfortunately, uh, that has been the... Uh, the pattern we've seen in courts after court. It's and it, terrible. It's, it's also terrible. It's made, a, it, it's it's made a laughing stock out of the chief justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, who said there's oh. no such thing as a Bush justice and a uh, oh, Obama please, justice. Please. They're gotta just, be your, you, you know, got, exactly. You know, they, you know the American people are getting a little tired of being treated like, uh, uh, you know, slow-witted uh, children. Uh, it, it's a, it, it's nonsensical. It's an insult, and indeed, this whole fraud is an insult uh, against this uh, this country. Uh, I want to I want to share uh, with the audience uh, one of the affidavits uh, that uh, that has been uh, given to us by an unidentified whistleblower, uh, and it uh, pertains to Dominion, uh, a whistleblower who also ah, saw what Dominion. happened in Venezuela. Uh, and the and the very similar events that took place in the United States on November 3rd. Uh, if we could put this up, please, uh, to share with the audience, because it is uh, indeed uh, alarming. Uh, the whistleblower says this, uh, if we uh, ever get it up. Uh, I am alarmed because of what is occurring in plain sight during this 2020 election for President of the United States. <laughs> the circumstances and events are eerily reminiscent of what happened with Smartmatic software electronically changing votes in the 2013 presidential election in Venezuela. What happened in the United States was that the vote counting was abruptly stopped in five states using Dominion software. At the time that vote counting was stopped, Donald Trump was significantly ahead in the votes. Then, during the wee hours of the morning, when there was no voting occurring and the vote count reporting was offline, something significantly changed. When the vote reporting resumed the very next morning, there was a very pronounced change in voting in favor of the opposing candidate, Joe Biden. That, from a whistleblower, who was present both in Venezuela in 2013 and uh, in this uh, country as we were counting votes uh, overnight on November 3rd. Your thoughts? Well, Lou, I don't know if people can appreciate this, but I think when they do, they're going to be outraged. Uh, our votes in 27, 28 states that are counted by Dominion and calculated and analyzed 
they, they're sent outside the United States. And they're not sent to Canada, they're sent to Germany and Spain. And the company counting it is not Dominion. It's Smartmatic, which is a company that was founded in 2005 in Venezuela for the specific purpose of fixing elections. That's their expertise, how to fix elections. They did it a number of times in Venezuela, they did it in Argentina, and they messed up an election to a fairly well in Chicago. And there's a whole congressional record that you can go look at about what a terrible company this is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the company wow. that was counting and calculating on election night. And they did all their old tricks. Well, we've they stopped it. Yeah. They also switched votes around subtly, maybe 10 per district so you don't notice it. They got caught in Antrim County, which is how we found out about them. And we are in the process now of investigating this in great, in great, great detail. But, but, I mean, just the mere fact that we have a foreign country, we have this in a foreign country, done by friends of mm -hmm. an enemy of the United States, Maduro, is outrageous mm -hmm. and has to stop it's immediately. It's outrageous. And it's all the more outrageous because Dominion uh, and uh, uh, Smartmatic um, were denied uh, use in, in the state of Texas, which called them out for what they are. They have a clear record. Democratic senators sending letters uh, in 2019, joining with Republicans now in decrying right. right. the reliability and, uh, the, and the ability of that system to avoid manipulation and fraud without any one of these secretaries of state in various states responding Absolutely. and shutting them down. Well, Lou, the amazing thing is, uh, Carolyn Maloney, a congresswoman from Manhattan, wrote a right. letter in 2006, 2007, explaining everything I just said. We shouldn't be using this company that was founded by Chavez to pick, call votes in America because their specialty in Venezuela is cheating. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently the governor signed them up and never bothered to do any due diligence of any kind. Uh, also, the company Dominion is a far left radical company. Some of their people have written and tweeted the worst things about Trump and Republicans that you could possibly imagine. They've since take it, taken it down, but we have it. So we've got a very radical far left co uh, co uh, company with, an, with some of their high level people supporters of Antifa. Can you believe that? And they're using a I, I, Venezuelan company as the, uh, as, the, as the vote counter, which is known for changing votes and also known to have really? the most insecure uh, uh, computers in this business. I think really? you'd only we're, pick we're them gonna have to, we're gonna have to. because you want to cheat. We're going to have to wrap here. Uh, you get the last quick word here. I was going to say, you know, the conclusion you have to come to is you either pick them because you're grossly negligent or you don't mind if you're cheating. And they're only going to cheat in one direction. After all, the, yeah. the chairman of, of Smartmatic is very, very close to none other than Mr. Soros. So how do you think they're going to cheat? They're going to cheat Democratic. They're going to cheat left wing. They're going to cheat right. radical. That's what they are, left wing radicals. Rudy Giuliani, we thank you very much. Rudy Giuliani, attorney for the president, uh, and, uh, and picking up some favorable uh, uh, wind at his back uh, legally uh, over the last 24 hours. Thanks for being with us, Rudy. Up next, a witness to voter fraud in Georgia says Joe Biden's vote tally in that state is artificially inflated. His name is Garland Favorito. He joins us right after the break with more on the battle for the White House. Stay with us, please. Georgia's Secretary of State investigating a vote count delay in suburban Atlanta. Fulton County election officials initially claimed that it was a burst pipe to blame for an election night delay in counting at the State Farm Arena. Then, according to text exchanges released last week, the leak was described as highly exaggerated by those officials. Now we know just exactly how exaggerated it was. They shut down voting because of a leaky toilet. 
that was not in any way related to the area in which they were working. That's highly exaggerated. The question becomes, why did they do that? Well, speaking of why, Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger also complaining about President Trump's charges of electoral fraud in his state, telling the Hill, quote, it's really the spinners that should be ashamed for playing with people's emotions. It's one thing to motivate people, I get that, but to spin people up and play with their emotions, it's emotional abuse, and they ought to grow up and start acting with integrity. And I would say to the Secretary of State, you're playing with votes, and you had better quit, because that is, well, very troubling to people, citizens, for whom you work. Well, joining us now is Garland Favorito. He's co-founder of Voter Georgia, an election integrity watchdog organization that's been closely watching this uh, vote count. Garland has said for months that the Dominion machines used all across Georgia, new machines, couldn't be trusted because they can be hacked. And I want to point out that Garland and I have uh, talked on uh, this broadcast, uh, well, uh, 14 years ago about uh, election integrity across this country. Uh, Garland, uh, give us, first, it's great to see you, and uh, give us your sense of what is going on with Dominion and the state of Georgia and what role it's playing in all of the irregularities in Georgia. Well, uh, Lou, first of all, thanks for having me back. That was 14 years ago you were on the other network. So it's a great honor to be back on your show. I admire all you've done for election integrity over the last 15 years. Um, so um, it, in regards to Dominion, um, we, we actually have not been arguing against these machines for months, Lou. We've actually been arguing against these machines for years. And in fact, we've been arguing against uh, and for verifiable, auditable, and recount uh, capable voting for 18 years. So this uh, is not a new thing that we just discovered that was going to be bad. Um, we warned the Secretary of State and multiple Secretaries of State, even his predecessors, that something had to be done, and he did the wrong thing. Um, one of the things that are wrong with these machines, or the Dominion machines, is they they uh, have votes that are, are encapsulated in barcodes, or QR codes, that you as the voter cannot verify. So when you go in and you fill your touch screen out and then you click the button, you get your, your paper trail out, um, the system accumulates the votes in, that are in barcodes, not what you actually read, because you, you and I cannot read barcode, nor can anybody else in America or the state of Georgia. So that's just that barcode is uh, what was uh, what is referred to uh, in some, and, and I appreciate you calling it a barcode. It, it is that it's hard to read, uh, I, almost impossible for an individual to read. It's called a QR code, uh, right. and it's it's a piece of paper that you're given as your uh, memento for having uh, having voted. Uh, so this recount, uh, give us your judgment about this. This recount, this so-called hand recount, how effective is it then? Uh, uh, in, in, yeah. es in establishing, uh, verifying the vote? So that's a great question, Lou, and I'm, I'm glad you asked me. So as you mentioned earlier, there is some concern about the Dominion software and malware that may or may, or may not be in it. Um, the, uh, so in ordering the uh, hand count, we were elated uh, as being election integrity advocates because we believed that we would finally get to see whether or not these uh, machines are counting accurately or not. However, what happened was uh, when the uh, Secretary of State uh, Raffensperger ordered the, the hand count, which was a good thing to do, he then told the counties that they will put all of their results into his system, which is a system called Arlo, made by a company called Voting Works. And that system, that process is fundamentally flawed because the, he's going to tell the counties now what their results are. You know, in elections, as you know, Lou, uh, the precincts tell the counties what their results are. The counties we tell the uh, state what the results are. Elections are from the bottom up. The results come from the bottom up. 
Well, now he has reversed it with this, um, what I feel, a fatally flawed um, uh, Arlo program, which, um, and he's sure. going to tell the counties what their results are. So that compromises this audit that we've spent three or four days on. Um, so we're very, very disappointed about the, the mechanism behind the audit. Garland, Garland, we've got about 30 seconds. So what, what should be done to get things straightened out in Georgia? Uh, 30 seconds, please. Uh, multiple things, Lou. Uh, we, we, uh, there's going to be some challenges. I think they're going to be looking at the, uh, the, the Dominion software. But the other issue is uh, invalid ballots. That's, you're going to see that to be a, a huge issue down here, as well as possible uh, uh, Trump votes that were thrown in the trash can by certain politically motivated elections people. But the big issue is, right. as in the ballots during the audit, the count, the counter sit, looked at these ballots that they were counting. They said, these, these don't look like real ballots. They don't have the correct characteristics. And that's what we're going to be uh, looking at. Uh, shortly, I believe, once these, uh, this, the audit is certified, then the challenges will come. Garland, Garland, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Great to see you. Garland Favorito, thanks for all you're doing. We'll have more charges of election fraud later here in this broadcast. We'll be joined by Patrick Kolbeck. He has a lot to say about those Dominion voting machines used in Detroit. Uh, and he's got some insight for us on what happened in that canvas uh, in Detroit. That's up next. The Trump campaign files a new lawsuit in Nevada. One of the attorneys behind the case, Jesse Banal, joins us. And a reminder, my new book, The Trump Century, it's available at ludiveshop.com, ludiveshop.com, and of course, amazon.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Breaking news now, the Trump campaign has filed a new lawsuit in Nevada charging 15,000 Nevada voters with voting in multiple states. The campaign also saying that Nevada voting machines are inherently unreliable and susceptible to being electronically compromised by malicious parties due to a shocking lack of physical security uh, and overall security. And uh, 40,000 ballots, they say, could be tainted. Joining us tonight is Jesse Banal, who is uh, the filer of that lawsuit in Nevada for the Trump campaign, also a member of General Michael Flynn's uh, legal defense team. Uh, great to have you with us. And let's, let's start with these votes and the, and the lawsuit. Uh, you basically want the, the, the results halted no certification of the votes because of all of these irregularities and what looks to be fraud. It seems like it's pretty much clearly fraud if you have 500 dead people who are voting. Yeah, Lou, that's absolutely right. We have identified thousands of instances of fraud and other irregularities that make it very clear that the result that we got out of Nevada that the media has been so uh, quick to report are simply inaccurate, inaccurate to the point that we now believe that Donald Trump won Nevada once you take out the fraud and irregularities. And these are uh, instances of, like you pointed out, dead people voting, people voting in multiple jurisdictions. We have specific instances of fraud that we've identified from whistleblowers and had very w uh, brave whistleblowers that have come forward, uh, people that have worked for Clark County, um, Nevada, where Las Vegas is, to really show um, that this race uh, it cannot properly be called uh, for anyone other than Donald Trump. And one of the really uh, amazing things is the Clark County Commission the other day uh, threw out one of the races and uh, based on admitted uh, instances of irregularities. And if this election wasn't good enough to show that uh, you had an election of a county commissioner, it certainly wasn't good enough to show uh, an election for president of the United States. What were the irregularities in the instance of the local race? And I understand that amounted to just about a fifth of the total votes uh, uh, as compared to the uh, to the presidential. Uh, give us give us a sense of what those irregularities were and how they pertain to the the presidential. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's a lot of the same instances that we have uh, pointed out, such as 
uh, people uh, voting twice, such as um, uh, uh, signatures not properly being authenticated, um, uh, the big problems with their authentication process. A lot of instances like that, ones that they've identified are over 900, but in reality, the total number of irregularities are far, far more than right now uh, the county officials are willing to admit. And what, uh, so what remedy uh, is available to you? Um, what can you do to, uh, to, uh, to move this forward? Well, we think the most appropriate thing, because we know um, that President Trump supporters are, are out there and have voted so strongly for him, the appropriate thing to do is to have a court here in Nevada recognize that President Trump's electors are the ones that will represent Nevada in the Electoral College. And the court sh certainly should not set the electors that have pledged to support Joe Biden. So straightforwardly reversing the, the outcome uh, given the, uh, the count of the votes that are so ir irregular, invalid, uh, including 500 dead people's uh, votes. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, the, the court, of course, it, it can come up with a, a remedy that it thinks is appropriate, but that's the remedy that we think is most appropriate in this case, to recognize the truth that Donald Trump won Nevada. Jesse Benal, thank you very much. We appreciate it, and we will be following the, the lawsuits and all of the developments in Clark County and, indeed, the entire state of Nevada. Thank you so much for being with us. Up next here, Dominion voting machines in Detroit. Were they connected to the Internet? Who connected them? And what did they send over that connection? We'll take that up with our next guest, Patrick Kolbeck, a poll watcher in Detroit. He's filed an affidavit detailing what he's seen. We'll be right back. Stay with us. I'm a Verizon engineer. On Wall Street today, stocks moved lower. The Dow down, down 345 points, most of that loss in the final minutes of trading. The S&P down 42, the Nasdaq down 98. Volume on the big board, 5.3 billion shares. And the FAA today cleared the grounded Boeing 737 MAX jetliner to fly again. The plane had been grounded since last year. Two crashes killed 346 people before that grounding. The FAA says changes in design, software, and training have made the plane safe. And listen to my reports three times a day on the Salem Radio Network. Election officials in Detroit say 42% of voting precincts there were unable to match the number of ballots cast and the number of voters signed up at the polls. Michigan's radical Dem Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson, went on AT&T's CNN last night to dismiss those irregularities. The number of precincts that have a mismatch, as you said now, is 42 percent. Yes, it was nearly twice that. 80 percent of precincts were out of balance in 2016, and yet the Board of Canvassers had no problem certifying then, and, and indeed they shouldn't. It's, again, a bookkeeping issue that oftentimes occurs if a voter shows up and, and uh, mm -hmm. leaves perhaps without voting or if there's a spoiled ballot or something like that. Well, joining us now is Patrick Kolbeck, an election uh, challenger in Wayne County, Michigan. He signed a sworn affidavit charging Dominion voting machines were connected to the Internet. Kolbeck is also a former Michigan State Senator and joins us tonight. Uh, good to have you with us. Let's, let's turn, Patrick, first to uh, the canvassing of the, of the vote. Uh, yeah. You were there watching the physical uh, uh, votes, uh, the initial, I take it, deadlock between the two Republicans and Democrats on the board. Uh, what happened? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Lou. Uh, thank you very much for having, us, having me on today. Um, they, uh, the board of canvassers is actually split. We've got two Republicans, we've got two Democrats that sit on that board of canvasser, and the chairman of that um, board uh, is Monica Palmer. And what she was doing was highlighting that, uh, that you know, unlike that 42 percent number that they're starting to pitch out there right now, she was highlighting that there was a 71 percent of the absentee voter precincts that just didn't reconcile. And, and why is this important? 
Because if a precinct is not reconciled, you can't recount them. That's an invitation to voter fraud. And so if you can stuff the ballot, if you can stuff the tabulator with those ballots, right. there's no way to go back and take those ballots Understood. off the table. They're, they're going to be in there for the public record. Our audience, I'm sure, will be interested to know that that two to two split, Democrat to Republican, on the board of canvassers, uh, it was resolved as the video stream of the proceedings went down. A decision yeah. was taken, the impasse was overcome, and the Republicans acceded to the Democrats in uh, moving ahead to certify the vote, despite yeah. all of those discrepancies. And the reports are that it was they were simply intimidated and threatened. Uh, what can you tell us about the veracity of those reports? Well, I've talked with both of the canvassers after the fact. Uh, obviously, I was there to show support for them while they were there. Um, I can tell you there was significant intimidation. There were threats to their lives. There's threats to their livelihood. To this day, there are still threats to their uh, lives and their livelihood that uh, I, I would take very seriously. During the meeting, um, I was a little upset when I uh, I heard comments from Democrat canvassers uh, to uh, accusing them of racism for holding accountable uh, Detroit accountable for that 71% number, and it was very intimidating if you're not used to that. And what I can say happened is that uh, the, the chairperson, that's Monica Palmer, was very concerned about finding an arrangement that, that uh, first of all, fulfilled her duty as a canvasser, which is to make sure that all the reports are in order and that they can validate them. Well, when you got 71 percent of the precincts that are invalid, on, in contrast to what uh, one of the Democrat uh, canvassers said, say, hey, you know, 71 percent, that's OK. That's normal for us. It shouldn't be a big deal. No, no, it's a big deal, and it's about time we make it a big deal. And I was happy that they rejected it the first time. But Monica was seeking to have something that could address everybody's concerns, so she proposed to have an audit of the system. Now, um, we know that if an, a really true audit, a real audit, not a fake audit where they just rubber stamp it at the end of it, but one that goes through both the paper trail and the electronic trail, um, we're going to find out that there is a direct viol there is consistent violation of the chain of custody around the election results, mm -hmm. and there's no way this should ever be certified. That's what Monica was pointing out, and uh, if we actually did that full audit as proposed on it, um, they would be fully mm -hmm. justified in not certifying that election. Matter of fact, the Democrats shouldn't be certifying it either. If they weren't playing politics, they wouldn't either. Yeah, you know, this is. Uh it's no longer playing politics. I mean, this is deadly stuff that we're watching it because is. of the threats, the intimidation nationwide. Uh, it began, I think, in earnest with, uh, of course, attempting to block the election of Donald Trump, uh, then an investigation, the special counsel, an effort to intimidate him, to overthrow him, and it's being carried out across uh, the nation. I want to put up the your secretary of state there in Michigan and what she said sure. specifically on this issue. Uh, Jocelyn Benson, may we have that, please? Okay. Well, it appears that the truth won in this scenario. Basically, the evidence is clear. There were no irregularities. There was no evidence of widespread fraud. And in fact, they were simply minor clerical errors uh, than we were discussing, actually less clerical errors uh, than in past elections. 71% yeah. is fewer than what they had in previous elections? Yeah, technically it was 72% uh, in the August 4th primary. So I guess that's factually correct. Still unacceptable for me as a voter. Um, I have, in my old Senate district, I, I had clerks that were present there that they would not rest until all of their precincts were balanced. So it would be 0% were unbalanced. Um, for De Detroit, for some reason, they have a different set of rules. And it's about time that they are held accountable to it because it impacts all of ours. It disenfranchises all voters. And here's one bright spot in all this is that I've seen in the in the wake of what's happened in this outrageous subversion of election integrity, I'm seeing Bernie supporters getting together with us because if anybody knows about election integrity subversion, it's a Bernie supporter because they've had elections stolen from them repeatedly. It's people from Libertarian Stripe. It's our establishment Republicans that are getting together with our grassroots Republicans. Everybody's rolling in the same direction for the first time. The key is um, to uh, see it through all the way through these court challenges. Patrick, we thank you for being with us. Patrick Colbeck, uh, and he has filed a sworn affidavit 
uh, on the uh, fraud uh, and irregularities that have taken place there in Wayne County. Patrick Kolpak, thank you for being with us, and thank you for standing up uh, for what's right.